Assalamu alaikum everyone this is dr mubashra and today i want to teach you regarding takayasu arteritis this takayasu arteritis is also known as pulseless disease another name for it is aortic arch syndrome it is basically a large vessel vasculitis it is a systemic vasculitis which affects the aorta and its main branches causing stenosis and thrombosis the acute inflammation causes dilatation and aneurysm of the aorta regarding the epidemiology of this disease it is more common in young females mostly the age of females is 20 to 40 years old and the female to male ratio is 9 is to 1 that is nine times females are more prone to develop this disease and the famous saying regarding takayasu arteritis a young asian female will make you pulseless the symptoms basically depend on the arteries involved the aortic arch is often affected along with cerebral ophthalmological and upper limb arteries and hence the symptoms occur The common symptoms of Takayasu arteritis are fatigue, malaise, lethargy and generalized weakness. Patient can have fever or feverish feeling along with some night sweats, arthralgias and myalgias. Even there can be some weight loss as well as headache and intermittent claudication. That is pain in the legs or ankles on walking which is relieved by sitting and taking rest. patient even can have symptoms of dizziness vigil changes or weak arm pulses or even pain in his arms and the systemic features which i already told you they are more common increased blood pressure is often a feature and it is because of reno vascular involvement the signs which the doctors are able to assess in these patients include absent arterial pulse as it is called as pulseless disease especially the radial pulse of the patient will be absent or it can be diminished patient will have increased blood pressure that is hypertension and there can be discrepancy in the blood pressure reading in both arms especially whenever the systolic blood pressure difference is more than 10 mm of mercury think of takayasu arteritis patient can have carotid subclavian or renal bruy and on precordium examination the doctor can assess early diastolic murmur of aortic regurgitation now coming towards the pathophysiology of takayasu arteritis it is a granulomatous vasculitis of aortic arch and large vessels for example carotid subclavian renal arteries leading to stenosis and aneurysm formation with the passage of time now coming towards the complications of takayasu arteritis the complications include hypertension which can be because of renal artery stenosis as the renal artery becomes more stenotic the kidney will sense this and thinks that the blood pressure is decreasing and the kidneys will start releasing a particular hormone that is renin and as a result more angiotensin 2 will be produced leading to hypertension even the patient may get transient ischemic attack or even stroke which may be because of carotid artery stenosis patient has complication including limb ischemia claudication which can be because of subclavian artery stenosis patient will have symptoms of atherosclerosis which is another factor contributing to hypertension transient ischemic attack and stroke and as a result patient can develop aortic regurgitation and ultimately heart failure now coming towards how to diagnose this disease basically it is a clinical diagnosis mostly first of first of all if the doctor assesses that there is a highly suspicion of takayasu arteritis 
the more sensitive test is ESR, erythrocyte sedimentation rate. It may be raised and the levels can be more than 50. C-reactive protein is another non-specific marker but it can also be raised and then there are some invasive investigations for example CT angiography of aorta or magnetic resonance angiography. Even there can be carotid Doppler ultrasound as well as echocardiography and uh, invasive angiography of aorta. Basically the CT angiography and magnetic resonance angiography will assess thickening of the vascular walls. There can be workup for connective tissue disorders for example antinuclear antibody, uh, RA factor as well as ANCA antibodies and HLA typing. There are certain diagnostic criteria for Takayasu arteritis, American College of Rheumatology criteria. This criteria basically requires at least three of the six criteria. If three criteria are met, patient has high suspicion of Takayasu arteritis. Among these, the first criteria is age at disease onset less than or equal to 40 years old, claudication of extremities, decreased brachial artery pressure, BP difference of more than 10 mm of mercury, brui over the subclavian artery or aorta and abnormalities in the arteriogram. Now coming towards the treatment of Takayasu arteritis. Firstly, there is general treatment that is patient education, counseling and explanation of the disease. Then there is multidisciplinary team involvement which include cardiologist, vascular surgeon, specialist nurses and other medical staff, occupational therapist. Then coming towards the specific management. In specific management again it is divided into two categories. One is pharmacological treatment and the other is intervention or surgical treatment. In pharmacological treatment, the mainstay of therapy is corticosteroids. Corticosteroids are given in oral form and since the patient has to take this for long period of time, they are, that's why bone cover and GI cover is given along with oral corticosteroids. The other treatment options include immunosuppressive therapy like methotrexate, cyclophosphamide, anti-TNF therapy or TNF inhibitor therapy, etanercept, infliximab, rituximab which are anti-CD20 monoclonal antibodies and interleukin-6 inhibitor that is toclizumab. Other treatment options can include strict management of cardiovascular disease risk factors for example hypertension, dyslipidemias, treatment of hypertension uh, include lifestyle modifications and antihypertensive agents. Even antiplatelets also have a role in treatment of Takayasu arteritis. The surgical treatment includes angioplasty with or without stenting, surgical revascularization and bypass graft surgery. So the prognosis is basically at 15 years the survival is almost 95%. So this was all about Takayasu arteritis which I wanted to share with you people. Thank you very much for listening. All the best. Allah Hafiz.